Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome to Market Psychology 101, where we look for value in the markets when there's fear and are cautious when there's greed. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the top altcoins available on Coinbase. I'm talking about Dogelink, AVAX, SHIB, XRP, Solana, Cardano, Matic, Dot, ICP, HBAR, and NIR. We're going to try to run through, the, through those as fast as we can. There's some of the top altcoins available per market cap on Coinbase, so I'm not getting into the garbage coins shit coins as much uh, for this video but if there are any altcoins on coinbase you'd like for me to take a look at comment them below so starting off with fear and greed we were recently in extreme fear right now we're in neutral gotta love all the random crap that temu advertises um, but as you can see here overall it, I, i'm not too worried and in fact i think that when you take a zoomed in look or zoomed out look rather um you can see that we were at our lowest level of fear that we've been all year so in my opinion that's possibly offering some great discounted deals on some of the altcoins you like not to say it can't go lower it it might but the way i look at things is more as a trade investor I, I don't look at this channel to try to promote trading buying and selling within the day week month or short term like that i'm looking at buying and holding even dollar cost averaging in from a set budget and never invest more than i'm willing to lose or can afford to lose and then should we get an alt season like we've had twice before here in 21 and 2017 that that would be the time to sell. I have some indicators and charts to show you when that might be, but that that's my outlook right there, just for any of you new viewers out there. So if any of you were buying altcoins or Bitcoin up here, then you should love the price where it's at right now. I'm not telling you to buy, nothing here is financial advice. Something I do like overall is that we have a higher base for fear and greed. We did come down as low as we've, we've ever been, but we've been down lower. When Bitcoin made that double top, it did have over a 50% correction here. I could show you that on the rainbow chart. So when it went from like 65 to 30 some thousand back up to 69,000, here we were in extreme fear. Here we were in extreme fear. The FTX sell off COVID, of course, extreme fear. So when we've been down here, have been those times. We haven't had anything like that. So overall, we're still holding a higher base. So hopefully price is maybe found a bit of a base and, and can try to test and make new all-time highs uh, pretty shortly, but we'll see. The alt season index on blockchaincenter.net, not sponsored. You see, we're still in this uptrend now. Could this roll over, uh, possibly form a micro downtrend before going back up? Sure, but we have not had anything like we have in 2021 or even in late 2017. So alt season has yet to hit. That's why, in my opinion, and it's really hard to, to know what the right alts are, so do your research. But if you guess the right altcoins and we get another alt season, whether we get one, two, three peaks, who knows, we could possibly get some amazing value. I'm talking about 5, 10, or even 20x. Um, now, some altcoins will not perform as well as they've done in previous cycles. Do keep that in mind. It, it's... A little bit like uh, like roulette. So uh, sometimes you never know. But again, do your own research and you got to put your money where your mouth is. As far as the Bitcoin rainbow chart, we just dipped our toes in the accumulate zone not too long ago. So again, some possible good long-term value. It, overall, if you're accumulating dollar cost averaging in to crypto when it's in these zones, overall, it has paid off. And what we talk about is possibly up to you taking profits when we get into these overbought areas, which we have not been in quite yet, believe it or not. So uh, before we get into the altcoins, I promise we're getting there in a second. Bitcoin on the weekly, it does have a buy signal, which is good. A couple areas I'm watching for to confirm that we are going to get higher. Uh, one, this wick, you can see here it got up to like 63.3. This wick back here, I'd like to see it close above it, around 63.7. And you can see the 50 and the 100-day moving average. I'd like to see the candle body close and stay above, not just give us a fake out. Uh, lastly, you can see this trend line. And, and trend lines, guys, they're only good for as long as they're good for. But you got to got to admire how obsessed Bitcoin is with this trend line. It's very close to the bull market support band as well. But it keeps tagging it. 
riding up the trend line, coming down. And anytime it's been underneath, it tends to be good value. It's similar to our moving averages. And you can see here, we're near the 200 day moving average. We have not got to this level since back here in September of 23. And then before that, when we were getting down, tagging that trend line. So some possible good value here for Bitcoin. Uh, but again, I wanna see it close and get above this trend line, get above these moving averages and get above this level. So a couple things to watch for. Is it possible it just hits here and goes lower? Sure, we'll see. Uh, a couple areas to watch for, possibly, in my opinion, uh, watch the 50-week moving average. If it did reverse and come back down the 50-week moving average at 52, I do want to see it stay above there. So we'll see. Uh, first, let's start off with Doge. And for Doge, as far as the price, look at that. We got the cool dancing Doge. I, I love when he appears. Um, zooming out on the weekly. You can see we did just get a green candle. Now it is fighting with the 50-week moving average. Um, but Doge, overall, it's at 12 cents. And if we look in the last year, this is one way I, I kind of look at, you know, is a is an asset a good value to possibly buy? Overall, you know, we're not here at 22. We're not at our lows at around 6. We're kind of in the middle there, lower end. Um, but the fact that Bitcoin looks like maybe it formed somewhat of a base, we were just in extreme fear. If you like Doge, I don't think it's the worst time to dollar cost average in. It's really hard to time bottom. So what I try to do is, you know, one, you could wait for that buy signal, the green dot to appear, sure. Uh, but two, we're hitting good value on these moving averages. And yes, it got down to 10 cents. It's at 12 right now, but we've been at 20 before. So, you know, pinching pennies a little bit are you getting the most value you can no uh, but instead of getting something at 50 percent off you're getting it you know 45 percent off whatever the percentages are so my opinion you know if you do like doge it's not the worst value uh if you're taking a value-minded dollar cost average strategy uh for this asset next let's go over to link and link again this one's fighting with the 50 week moving average came down touched the 200 and let's zoom back out here okay so yeah it's just honoring the 200 uh week moving average pretty nice the candle body closed on the 100 um, but maybe we'll get some chop and if it comes back down you can see here the 382 of the fib and the way i draw fibs again is from the high to the low uh, when we're looking at prices in between Make sure your FIB's on log scale and yeah, possibly forming a nice base. I like Link. It's one of my favorite altcoins. So decent value in my opinion. You know, it's not up here at 20 or 22. Right now it's at 13 or 14. So Link is held up pretty strong compared to other altcoins. Next, let's take a look at AVAX. And AVAX right here, a little bit weaker than the last two we talked about, Doge and Link, but it is staying on that 382. And you can see with these wicks possibly getting ready to go back up. The 200 week moving average has finally appeared. So, you know, AVAX a, a little younger. Again, look at that base down here. That, that's pretty nice. So, possible base for AVAX. Now, all these bases on the 3 2 for these, uh, for Link Doge ship, they have to hold. They have to hold. Otherwise, they could be going lower, you know, to the, to the 236 FIB or where there's price action as well. You know, here you can see AVEX came, could come down to this 20 level, which it almost did there. Um, so it does have to hold, and this might be a local bottom in the shorter medium term. We'll see. So possible good areas to dollar cost average in. And guys, this is just me, but if I really like an altcoin, um, it, again, it's really hard to time bottoms. If we get down to these key moving averages and key FIB supports, I don't mind dollar cost averaging it a little bit so I don't miss these areas. Again, could it get lower? Sure. But if I like any asset enough to dollar cost average in here, then I will love it when it comes down here. That is my value-minded approach here at Market Psychology. When things get bad, when things get fearful, we, we look for opportunities and those are opportunities right there. But again, there's no guarantees and I won't pretend to uh, know what's going to happen like so many other YouTubers claim to do. It's it's impossible. No one has a 
as a secret recipe to, to figure the, these things out, but we do try to take a calculated approach and and see where is the value. Uh, so next, let's go over to SHIB. <coughs> Excuse me. SHIB, All right? It, again, 382, finding a base. Same story on a lot of these. You got moving average support, FIB support, and yeah, overall, we do have some green. So like I showed you with Bitcoin, if Bitcoin can get above those moving averages in that 63.7, I would not be surprised to see some of these altcoins coming back up, you know, towards the 0.5 uh, or, you know, some of these ranges that they've been in for the last few, month, few months. Next, let's take a look at XRP and XRP overall at much lower value. Now this FIB, yeah, it does need to be on a log scale. But it is at lower value compared to the others. You can see it's at the 236, not the 382, like some of these stronger altcoins. Um, but look at that big, long-legged doji it just had and wicked right up into these moving averages. So I'm sure a lot of XRP people are feeling pretty good. Now it's got to get above that. And you can see XRP has tested this 0.5 FIB three times before and has been breaking down. So it did have these lower highs, came down here. Now, is this possible great value for XRP? Sure, you know, if this thing runs again. Um, but guys, you know, XRP is one coin I'm worried about. It's a 2017 coin, kind of like Cardano in the way that you got a lot of these people still holding out hope for these older altcoins. Is it going to run? I don't know. Um, but do be cautious. You know, I see a lot of ridiculous videos claiming XRP is going to have go to 10k have a 500 trillion dollar market cap ridiculous predictions one way to look at possible price predictions that fib like i showed you how to draw from the height of the low take it off log scale and look at some of these fib extension targets so uh, these would be two areas to watch for around three bucks or four dollars 65 cents at the 2618 the 1618 you can do these for any of the other altcoins if we go to uh, coin market cap and take a look at XRP. You know, it's at around 25 billion valuation right now. Okay, so market cap, it's not this magical number that can become anything people want it to be. Uh, if XRP right now it's at 50 cents, if it's going to go to $3, this 1618, you're, you're multiplying that times six. And so then with the market cap, you're multiplying this times six. All right, so 25 times six, that'd be a $150 billion market cap. Could XRP have a $150 billion market cap? Seems reasonable. Sure, why not? Peak alt season, I could see it. Heck, I could even see uh, it possibly going up to here where it'll have something like $250 billion. I don't know. I'm not doing the math in my head right now. But when people are making these ridiculous claims that it's going to go to $50, $500, 10K, guys, it that's not going to happen. You have to calculate market cap. And for any of these altcoins not named Solana or Ethereum, I have a hard time believing many of them, if any of them are going to get above that $300 billion mark, even if it's just for a few days. So do be aware of that. All right, next, let's go over to Solana. And hopefully I picked the one with the chart, and I did. Sweet. So Solana, let's move this chart out, and we have to put it back on log scale. Try to draw that as close as I can. So I showed you that one price prediction. You can do it for any of the others. I, I, I don't want to spend time doing that for every coin here. Uh, but you can see here Solana coming back down to that 786 FIB at around 123 and then going back up again. So Solana, like I just mentioned, this is probably going to be the strongest mega cap altcoin outside of Ethereum. Um, it, as far as Solana, you know, could it get to something like a $500 billion market cap? This is this would be the one out of uh, all the other altcoins that I could see possibly making huge moves. So Solana, I think it's going to be the darling of this next cycle, this crypto cycle. Should we have it? Another crypto cycle with alt season? I, I think Solana is going to be uh, the one that gets most talked about outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So right now, Solana is a $71 billion valuation. And uh, yeah, as a buy signal, let's go over to the daily. You see, ooh, let's make this more visible. And the daily, this looks 
pretty good to me. This looks bullish. Now, I want to see it close and stay above these moving averages, okay? So right now, it is above. That's great. I want to see it consistently stay above and turn these uh, that 50 and 100 into support. And we'll see. Uh, but otherwise, been chopping through there. Technically, we still have a lower high. Um, but if it starts making its way up here and staying on these moving averages above 145, I think that'd be a good thing for Solana. Next, let's go over to Cardano. And, all right, cool. I found the right one. So Cardano has some resistance at the 100 moving average. Um, not too far away from the 236 Fib. So if Cardano is one coin you really like, I think it is in good value time right here. So uh, you're not buying it at the 0.5. You're not buying it at the 382. You're buying it near the 236. Now it is hitting resistance. So it, and look at those wicks, how it's running into that. So it's possible it comes back down here. Um, but if it does, you know, whether it's whether you're buying it here at 43 or down here at 40, if you're thinking long term approach, like if we get another alt season cycle, like I showed you before on the rainbow chart, if we get another alt season, okay, which can last around a month, then this should be a good value time to buy because as you can see, Cardano, it can spike up now. With that being said, there's no guarantees that the altcoin is going to perform as good or better than it has in prior cycles so do understand and know that um and you know maybe also consider diversifying and and looking at multiple altcoins so all right next let's go over to matic and matic matic all right we gotta we gotta update our fib here it's, it's been a while all right matic came underneath the 236 and back up to it but uh matic overall not looking great um but it did not get under this level at around 31 cents if it got under that level oh god look out below because we have this price structure here it, it might go down a ways uh which would not be great so you know we're talking about matic at around uh three cents possibly now i'm not saying that's going to happen but this price level here at around 31 you can see if it got underneath it look out below so overall if you like matic i, I think it's great value here um but again these these lows have to hold okay and if they don't then then things could get really bad you could uh catch a falling knife so maybe you want to wait for one of these buy signals to spawn in now it doesn't mean that those will hold um, you know, like we had here, we had a buy signal here only to come back down. You know, we had this giant, uh, giant movement down here. Um, but if you like Matic, some possible great value. Hedge your bets, put your money where your mouth is. Uh, next, let's go over to Dot. Dot, same thing as Matic, everything I just said. So right here, it does have a weekly buy signal. And as long as it stays above this, three and a half dollar mark that's great i think you're getting good value on these but again do you believe in this altcoin there's a reason it's not performing as well as solana or link or some of these others other altcoins every cycle there are different altcoins that run a little bit better so some of these charts where they are showing more weakness as far as price action i don't love it um you know even though something like solana is is much more overvalued, I, I would still feel safer with that than I would with uh, Dot or Matic, uh, Cardano or XRP. That's just my opinion. Again, alt season, it's a great equalizer. Some coins, it, it doesn't even matter what the uh, utility or tokenomics or anything is. Like some of them can still run way more and do many more multiples uh, for the money that you put in there. Sure, that's possible. Um, but again, there's no guarantee. And in 2021, I saw too many coins that were 2017 coins that did nothing. And so I, I rather, this is me personally speaking, I, I rather look for coins you know, whose projects, communities are still going strong. Uh, nothing that is a thing of the past. So dot, if you like it, good value. Um, but again, I wish it looked stronger like some of the other altcoins we looked at. All right, we have ICP, HBAR, NIR. All right, ICP. Finally, we have a weekly sell or a weekly buy signal after it sold off quite a bit. So ICB, 
ICP, man, that was brutal <laughs> as it came down. Got underneath the 236, did form a little bit of a base here, and it wicked up to this, or wicked down to this level. You can see there's some price action over here, just barely, um, but a lot back here that it was honoring getting back down to. So ICP on the daily, on the weekly, as these moving averages, it has to turn from resistance back into support. This nine. Dollar eighty cent level is very important, as well as that fifty week moving average. Got to get back above that, uh, that ten twenty, yeah, that ten ten point three. So right in here, very important levels. You can even see the hundred week moving average, even when we were bullish, was resistance. So uh, ICP not only does that have to get back above that, but uh, that fifteen three level or wherever this comes back down to. Um, it's going to have to successfully get above that 100-week moving average, too. All right, H-bar and near, and we will finish with that. H-bar, uh, gosh, you never never know which one to, to pick here. Oh, I'm always hoping it's the one with uh, where I picked the, uh, or where I, where I drew a chart before. Yay, finally found it. Uh, yeah, when you type in H-bar, there's so many different options. I don't know why that one's different than the other. So H-bar... It does look like, all right, I have to, I have to correct my, my fib here. All right, it's on the 618 as far as the fib. All right, cool. And let's zoom in within the past year. So you can see here, H-bar was one, uh, and again, I believe I'm on the right one, where it got above this prior high here in February of 23. Got all the way up to about 19 cents, okay? Formed a base here at the 0.5, now it's at the 618. Uh, it is overall in a downward trend. But again, in the last year, we are at good value comparatively. So if HBAR is something you love, not the worst value here. Could it go lower? Sure. Um, but overall, I do like this. It, the only other thing I'd say is, you know, maybe you could argue that this is a head and shoulders pattern and it's possibly getting ready to come down to this five cent range. You know, if things got really bad, could that happen? Sure. But, you know, if HBAR was an altcoin I really loved, I wouldn't mind buying it here. And if it did come down to five cents, I wouldn't mind buying a lot more. So that's just me. Lastly, let's finish up with near protocol. And hopefully I picked the right one and I did. Yay. We have another another fib we have to put on log scale. <coughs> so near 0.5 offering good support as well as the uh, 50 and the 100, you can see a wick down there. So near holding up better as a buy signal. I do like how this looks for near. So if near protocol is an altcoin you like, to me this looks good. This looks better than uh, a handful of the other ones we just looked at, um, such as XRP, Matic Dot, and Cardano. Um, I like this chart a lot more. This one is held up stronger. It, these uh, moving averages, these large moving Long-term moving averages are still supports, so I do like that for near. Um, anyways, as far let's close out with this. As far as when alt season happens, I'm going to keep referencing a couple of these charts. One is Bitcoin dominance, and Bitcoin dominance when it tanks here on the weekly, down to the low 40 percent, and you can see here it can average around four to maybe six weeks that it's tanking down. That's what you have to watch for. Now Bitcoin dominance. I do want to see it hit this 57, 58 level, a couple moving averages, one from the top here. You can see that's where it peaked in the 2021 uh, alt season as well, or before alt season started here, 2017. Um, that trend line's coming down here, so that's around 57, 58. We also have this trend line, I just drew it from the bottom um, here in, in 2020 before we had the next alt season. So a couple converging trend lines, I, I would expect dominance to possibly get there at the very minimum. Could it get the 60s or higher? Sure. But as far as a alt season, this is my base case for where dominance would have to get to. So we'll, we'll see if that holds up. And tether dominance, we have to take this off log scale. When tether dominance and let's, uh, let's make the moving averages disappear. When tether dominance comes down to this trend line, it tends to signal local tops. So all the local tops, whether it's 2019 mid-cycle top, COVID top, other tops where we did have alt season and the one that just happened, 
we had tether dominance coming down to there so that five percent overall of the money in crypto that's in tether that's what we're looking at the overall dominance of tether and people put their money into tether uh to be more of a stable coin so they're they're not losing as much money during volatile times so uh one bullish thing you can look at or consider is that tether you know we do have the sell signal uh overall so it could come down there but let's turn this back on it and look at that it came right up to those moving averages too but as far as this trend this is still an uptrend so it have to break down and come back down here could that happen sure maybe why not um, but i want to see what tether dominance does at these levels whether or not it's going to bounce back higher or not so in my opinion something i'm looking for is you know we, we showed how bitcoin dominance still might have a little higher to go tether dominance is in this uptrend so you know should things have one more sell-off um even for bitcoin down to the 50 week moving average test that that would not shock me guys is it going to happen who knows um and as you can see here we have these uh, other tops as well so maybe bitcoin's going to come back up to this trend line the other tops have made and then come back down have one final flush before going vertical it, no one knows these are just some of the thoughts i have um but if we did have one more self i would not be shocked does that mean i'm going to miss dollar cost averaging in to any of the altcoins i like at these levels no it does not so you know hope for the best prepare for the worst make yourself a plan part of my plan is dollar cost averaging in when we have good value into the altcoins i like and that's what i've been doing so anyways guys hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you have a wonderful monday and a wonderful week take care thank you for watching